Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your shed blood. I suppose as often as I mention it from the pulpit, as much as it's preached and sung about, there might be those who get tired of hearing the phrase, the shed blood of Jesus. We will never tire of it. It is the reason we can speak to the living God and call him our Father. We praise you, Jesus, for the love, the great love you had to leave heaven, come to earth, be one with us, die for us, rise again, and now live in us. I pray today that you will take common words and make them mighty, liberating words, comforting words. Use this message today to show somebody that God is faithful. God is faithful by whom we were called. And we'll thank you at the end of this service when we partake of the juice and the bread symbolizing the very life of God inside of us. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you for being seated. And again, we welcome everybody who might be watching us online. These were wonderful songs that were chosen today. That last song emphasizes, I am redeemed. Um, and what I think we believers need to constantly remind ourselves is that we are God's children, completely forgiven, <clears throat> born again, but we live in a cursed world. We are a blessed people living in a cursed world. And for that reason, we are uncomfortable. We are ill at ease. I'm not home. I don't agree with anything in this world. Every system in it is under the control of the devil. All government, uh, all communications, all the systems, education, you name it, it's all under the control of the prince of the powers of the air. And that's the same spirit that works in the children of disobedience, the lost people. So, of course, I'm uncomfortable. I'm in, in a strange land. The only time I'm comfortable is when I'm with you. Because we have something in common. I get out there, I don't know how to talk. I don't know what to do half the time. I see stuff that offends me. Uh, what do you do? Do you scream? Do you walk away? What, what, what is the dilemma that the child of God lives in? It is this. As long as we are not with him, we are uncomfortable and we are homesick. There were people here today who could barely get out of bed. But they did. And they showered and they dressed. And they drove to church under great duress. No telling what they left back at the house. But they had to come here today. Brother, God bless you. Sister, God saw that effort you put forth to come to his house today. Some people call it legalism. You're scared not to go to church. You're wrong. I need to go to church. I get hungry for church and God's people, the fellowship of it. I need this. This is the body of Christ. This is what I belong to. This is my family. And so in just a few moments before we do this great thing that the Lord taught us to do and commanded us to do called communion, I want to do my best to encourage some of you 
and remind you that God is faithful. You know, we read often and we read it loudly out of Romans 8, if God be for us, who can be against us? And I love that scripture. It's true. And then at Christmas time, we always say, Emmanuel, God with us. God is for us. God is with us. It may feel that way at Christmas and in high times of our life, but there are many times I I read that scripture and say, well, then where is he? Not long ago, I was drawn to Judges chapter 6, and I preached from this here. Last night as I flipped and thumbed through scripture, I can't... Lately, I can't find anything. I just flip and thumb. I can't even concentrate. So I just flip and thumb, and there's one. I underlined that one. That's a good one, and uh, God help me to find another one here somewhere. There's no intense study. There's no methodology to this. But I came to Judges chapter 6. And I started at verse 11 because it's pretty marked up in my Bible. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the tree which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. Have you read this lately? Gideon is hiding. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And that's not what I'm preaching on today. It's this. Gideon said, If the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened? If the Lord is with me, if he is Emmanuel, if God be for me, then why has all this happened? And where are all the miracles everybody talks about? We've heard these stories, he said, and he's talking to Jesus. He's about had it. He's worn out. He's tired. And the Lord said, hello there, mighty man of valor. And he said, what are you talking about? The Lord is with you. If the Lord is with me, why is my life all to pieces? And I've heard all the old timers talk about the miracles, but I don't see any now. Tell you what it is, he said, the Lord has forsaken us. There it is. The Lord has forsaken us. If the Lord is with us, Why has all this happened? I confess to you again that I have allowed all the bad news, not from television. I don't watch that. It comes on my phone, texts and emails. It comes through my wife's phone. It comes through the church office. It's People in trouble. People whose lives are all to pieces and they don't know what to do next. And I'm saying to the Lord, if you're with us, why is all this happening? Couldn't we have just a miracle here or there? I mean, a real one that lasts? I don't want a Red Sea experience, Gideon was saying. He said, listen, angel of the Lord, I've heard my forefathers talk about how God parted the Red Sea and brought us across on dry land, and we're here today because of that. He said, I'm not needing a Red Sea experience. I just want some help for today. you got to understand that his enemy, Gideon's enemy, the Midianites, were a foul group, tribe, people, race of people. They were the enemies of God's people. 
And Israel, here's what they had to deal with for seven years. Israel would plant a crop, work hard, work their fingers to the bone, sweat, pray for rain, get a crop. And then the Midianites would thunder through their property on their camels and steal all of the harvest they had already laid up and what they couldn't carry away, they burned. Every time Israel said, this is a great harvest, here the enemy would come and steal it and burn it. I have seen that happen in life after life. It's the hit and run tactic of Satan. You know, finally, it looks like a breakthrough. Something seems to be changing. We are feeling more positive, more spiritual, much better, only to have something else come and knock us back down. For me, over the years, about January, this is February, I always got something close to pneumonia or some chest infection. I would always find myself every January in the bed at the doctor's office on drugs, full of cough syrup, inhalers, walking around with my eyes glassy, trying to talk to people with sanity, full of all of this stuff so I could breathe. And it always happened after a spiritual season, after a harvest, after I said, finally, I'm making some great progress with God. Never been hungrier for the scripture. Never prayed more in my life. (laughs) And then it comes, an infection. Sandra can testify to it. It's been that way for 45 years. Every one of you, I believe, could point to something very similar to that that just about the time you thought the sun was breaking through, another storm arose. It's the hit and run tactics of the devil, the Midianites. See, we're not, we're not wanting some gigantic miracle that shakes the earth. I just want to be free from some pain. I want to see some progress in my family. I talked to a preacher yesterday. You know what he said to me? And it rung a bell. Ding. He said, Loran, my wife and I are only as happy as our saddest child. How many of you have children? So do you know what I'm talking about? I do not care how good it is in life. If your child is not faring well, That's about the degree of happiness you have. Not me. I got victory. I gave him to Jesus. You're a liar. And I get tired of liars. And I know I'm acting a little edgy right now, but I I get tired of church fakery, hypocrisy. You did not give your children up so that they don't bother you anymore. They They came out of you. They are you. And when they're crying, you're crying. And when they hurt, you hurt. And when they succeed, you succeed. Don't give us that bull. And you find yourself just like Gideon when he said, go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. And he said, how can I deliver Israel? Now, we're not called to deliver Israel. but So maybe I can paraphrase it this way. How can I function when that situation is in my life or in somebody, somebody's life that I love? How can I function? You see how I'm pausing here today? Because I want this to take root. This church is full of people who are desperate. I told you we live in a cursed world. When you said, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, save me, the devil said, I'm going to unleash everything I have against you. And it never ceases. 
It does not mean that God is weaker than the enemy. It means that God means what he says. I will be with you always until the end of the age. How can I continue to function? You know, sometimes you just do it. You come to church and you try to create a feeling. I, I'm trying to feel something here. And it just won't come. And you see all the other people just praising him. But you can't. You, you, I have been to the place I could not say, praise the Lord. I could not raise my hand. Did that make me weak? Of course it did. I am weak. I'm nothing without Jesus. I can't raise a hand without Jesus. I can't even say praise the Lord without the Holy Spirit giving me the strength to say it. Weak? Are you kidding? There's nothing strong about me except the Lord who lives in me. You get to that place and you say, how can I function? And then it happens. You won't tell anybody. But it says up in here, the Lord has forsaken me. And you have this low-grade nausea all the time, just a, li just, just a little uneasy in your belly all the time. And in the back of your mind, you're saying, what's going to happen next? When will it hit again? It has settled down for a period of time, but... We don't know when it's going to tear up again. We don't know when they'll go off the edge again. We don't know how long, even if they've been sober, clean, happy for seven months. Seven months is no time. We just don't know. You're afraid to shout. You're afraid to even give a testimony. You're, you say, I'm not giving that praise report yet. Because I did it the last time and it didn't work out the way. Am I preaching all right? I, I, I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable here. I've held back a lot of praise reports because I just want to see if it lasted a little bit longer. When's it going to happen again? I thought this was fixed. It just doesn't seem like it will ever be over. And your mind flits everywhere. When I tell you I can't concentrate and I, I just do this all the time, I am confessing to you that I don't have the power to make myself concentrate on the Word of God. I can read a chapter and not remember that I read it. I can speak a verse and not remember what I said because my mind is so overwrought with the problems and the burdens, it's, it's not just in my family, it's for you too. And I wonder, how do people take this? How can they? Sandra read me something last night that just broke my heart. One of our wonderful, loyal, faithful, longtime members of this church suffering in a terrible, terrible way. The whole family has been faithful. And he's in a bad place today. And I thought, Lord, why is it that the good people, that's a good man. Why is he laying up there in that condition? The Lord doesn't answer you. He doesn't say, well, hold on, Loran. Now, you got me all wrong here. It's the same thing Gideon did when he said, if the Lord's with us, why has all this happened? Where are the miracles? But now the Lord has forsaken us. And the Lord didn't answer it. He didn't even try to explain it. He said, I'm not interested. This, he didn't say it. I hear God saying, I'm not interested in your present complaint. I'm going to show you what God in heaven is about to do. With you in your weakness, in your desperation, in your discouragement. When you can't concentrate, Gideon, you can't even harvest wheat. 
without looking over your shoulder to see if a Midianite is coming. And when you finish your run and get in a cave, you hide in a den. You can't even live in a house. But I'm going to show you that God does not choose the strong. God does not choose the wise. God does not choose the self-sufficient. God chooses those who have nothing. God chooses those who are weak to show his mighty power in them. God is going to deliver. It is a promise. It is a heavenly fact. God is with us. God is for us. Don't let the silence of God fool you. The devil talks all the time. God just says, I spoke it and it will come to pass. The devil keeps running his mouth. He chatters, he lies, he deceives, he insinuates all day long. And even at night when you can't sleep, he just talks, talks, talks. He's a thief. He's a liar. He is a destroyer. And he is doomed to the lake of fire. Don't let the silence of God discourage you because God has already said, I have delivered you. I will deliver you. I have forgiven you. I will forgive you. You are mine. <laughs> Satan says, boy, I feel strong right here. Satan says God's punishing you. In the back of all of our minds at times, we think, is, is this because of something I did? Am I having to pay for something I did? Satan says, God's paying you back. You're being punished for what you did. I want you to hear me. I want to put this issue to bed today. Listen to your preacher. If you're listening, say amen. amen. Repentance nullifies punishment. When you repent, God's anger and the punishment of heaven is averted. You are clean, clear, and forgiven. You are not being paid back and you're not having to pay for something that you have been washed clean from. God has forgiven you. Ladies, I don't care what happened. If you repented, God forgave it, and you're not being punished for it. He, Psalm 103, here's what it says. God forgives God heals, God redeems, God crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. God satisfies you. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Listen to me, church. Listen. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. That is the word of the Lord. That is forever established in the heavens. That cannot be changed. That will never go away. So listen to this preacher today. If you repented, you are not being punished for your past sins. They are gone. They evaporated into nothingness. They are not in God's mind and they are not in God's heart. 
He threw them out of existence. You are clean, sanctified, holy, justified, righteous in the sight of God. I don't care what the sin is. In everybody's mind, homosexuality is about the worst thing. Doesn't matter. Murder. Which ones you want me to list? The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Washed away every remnant of my past. The devil comes and says, God doesn't care. God has forsaken you. Please listen. When the disciples were in a boat on a lake, this is the most preached about stuff there is, and a storm arose, and Jesus was in the back of the boat asleep. And in that storm, they panicked and ran back to him and shook him and said, I'm going to say it the old King James way first. Carest thou not that we perish? I love that. That's beautiful. It's poetic to me. Carest thou not that we perish? Let's bring it up to date. Lord, don't you care that we're about to die? And Jesus got up and he sealed the storm and said, where's your faith? I'm not going to take that and start beating people over the head with it. When you're going through what you're going through, I would never say, where's your faith? Only a Pharisee would do that. A self-righteous, stop me now, Jesus, because I just got out of the Spirit. A self-righteous Pharisee would say that. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? It's right where it's always been. Deep down in my sanctified soul, it might be about this big right now, but it's still there. And because of this storm, God's going to bring it up and swell it up and bring it out. You see, God brought you in so he could bring you through so he could build you up. God has not forsaken us. I'm going to say this ever so reverently. Believe me, when I, I want to be reverent when I say this. God has only forsaken one person ever. It was his own son hanging on a cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's the only one that will have ever been forsaken. He was forsaken so that when he died and rose again, you would never be forsaken by God. Never. 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 So when you, like Gideon, say, has God forsaken us? God isn't saying, don't say that. What he's actually saying is, you're not the first one to say that. Don't feel that way. That's not what he's doing. Don't. He says, no, you're not the first one to feel that way. But if you'll trust me, praise me, watch what I will do. So much I want to say this morning, but it, it'll be too personal. And it's, it would be too personal with some of the people here, the things they're having to go through. So I think the best thing we can do right now is celebrate the shed blood of Jesus, which gives us the victory over sin, over hell, over death, over the grave, over the devil. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. 
Hallelujah. Since we've been saved by his blood, we shall be saved from his wrath. Praise the Lord. And then we're going to eat that little piece of bread that says, you're a weird person in a cursed world. You can smile and rejoice when everything looks bad. Now, they're going to try to fake it tonight in L.A. You know that, don't you? Oh, man, people paid $15,000, $20,000 for a seat to watch people play ball. And they're going to drink and do drugs and act like fools. That's because that's all they got. Now, the, the contradictory thing is that right outside that multi-billion dollar uh, arena, stadium, are homeless people, hungry, without clothes, they're mentally disturbed people who can't get help. Isn't that a picture of the world? Hey, let's have a party. But look at the world we are having this party in. That's what makes me a weird dude. Folks, we can rejoice this morning. We can rejoice in the blood and the body of Jesus because we know that no matter what happens on this earth, we ain't going to be here much longer. So, let's help me, Pastor. Do I have a... Oh, here. Thank you. And then, I want Vanessa to come back and sing that song, Jesus. Choir to do that song again. Father, I thank you that I get to sit around the table with a large family. And while my eyes cannot see you, I know that you are at the head of the table. I thank you this morning, Lord, for this little piece of bread that says to me, you belong to heaven. Nothing can snatch you out of my hand. Your life is from my body. Your joy comes from my body. I thank you for this little cup of juice which says to me, you are my beloved, you are forgiven. It says to the devil, you have no control, you have no power. It says to the whole universe, look at my trophy my trophy of grace, this redeemed one. I have drawn him to myself. And one day, we will be united never to be separated throughout all eternity. I thank you for this bread, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this juice, Lord Jesus. Before Vanessa sings, choir sings, let's stand and sing that with David one time. I'll let you get everything placed. This would be a great time. Even if your hands feel like they weigh about 40 pounds a piece, get, give it a shot. Do this. And let's sing to him, David. Ready?
I love that song, The Name of Jesus.
What is that name? Jesus. Heaven loves to hear you say that. What is that name? Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. We praise you. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the throne of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful day in the Lord. We'll see you tomorrow night for our most important service.